Expedition mode is one of the mods available in the Remix menu, and with it you're able to play a special game mode with miniature campaigns to complete. To access it, you'll need to enable it here. Much like the Arena challenges, you'll only have access to Monk and Survivor at first, and you'll need to beat each Slugcat's campaign to unlock them here, except for Hunter, which is unlocked by beating Monk or Survivor. Note that while Expedition Mode does require the Downpour DLC, you can play it without the More Slugcats mod enabled if you'd like to, and the More Slugcats content will be gone. Expedition Mode does also support multiple players with Jolly Co-op. Unfortunately, you cannot go on Expeditions as the Blueberry Slugcat, though. You go on expeditions, as the name suggests, with randomly selected objectives to complete. They're like mini campaigns, or longer versions of the arena challenges. You can decide how many challenges you'd like, from 1 to 5, the difficulty of them, and whether or not you can see them ahead of time. In this menu here, you can also disable challenges if there's a particular one that you don't want to have show up. When you start your expedition, you'll be put in a shelter in a randomly selected region. I've had the game put me in Metropolis once as a non-artificer character, but otherwise it seems to be random from the available regions for that slug cap. You start at 1 coma, remember the minimum coma is 0 coma, and if you would drop below 0 coma, you instead lose the game and perma die. All slug cats have a maximum coma of 5 to start with, and visiting echoes will not improve it. Saint is unable to reach their ascended form as a result. The expeditions take place after the completion of the campaign, so 5 pebbles will consider you to be revisiting him and be angry, and storylines can't be progressed. Hunter has unlimited cycles as well. Arena unlocks are not present in expedition mode, and your objectives are visible in the top left, and holding map will reveal them. Upon completing every objective, you'll be told that you've finished your expedition and need to rest to complete it. At this point, you have to return to a shelter with enough food to hibernate to win. Starving yourself will not count. If your last challenge was to earn a passage, you'll win on the cycle that you sleep and earn it, but if your last challenge was to visit an echo, you will not win on the cycle that you visit it. It'll send you back to the shelter and you'll need to rest again after that. Depending on the objectives you've completed, you'll earn a number of points, which unlock perks and burdens. You will not earn points for anything outside of your challenges. Killing creatures, earning passages, time spent, none of that influences your final points. It's only the challenges. If you don't want to or can't complete every objective, you can earn a partial completion by going to the depths. You'll earn reduced points, but you will earn credit for what you've completed. Going to the slug cat tree will not end the game, you have to go to the depths. If you permanently die, you earn no points. Keep in mind that partial completions are an option if you're stuck on an extremely difficult challenge. By earning these points, you'll increase your level, which is necessary to complete the quests in the progression page. There are 75 of them, each of them with different requirements. The white quests unlock music in the jukebox, the green quests unlock perk slots, the blue quests unlock perks, and the red quests unlock burdens. The final quest is to finish all 74 other quests, and it gives you the Expedition Leader achievement, which is currently the rarest in the game on Steam. The quests are all fairly straightforward, either requiring you to reach a certain level, beat expeditions with a particular slug cat, complete a particular challenge a certain number of times, beat expeditions with hidden challenges or burdens, or beat the missions. Missions are available at the top of the progression page, and there's one for each slug cat. They're predetermined expeditions with specific challenges to complete, and I'll go into more detail on those later. Uh, note that for quests, the difficulty of the expedition challenge doesn't matter. If a quest needs you to beat an expedition as Rivulet, you can do a single challenge expedition and keep re-rolling until you get an easy one. Quests that say you need to complete a certain number of challenges, such as this where you need to play a saint and beat three challenges, mean that you need to beat three challenges in a single expedition, not overall. There are 16 pokes that you can unlock through completing quests, and the maximum number of pokes you can use at once is 8 once you hit level 20. These pokes are spawning with a scavenger lantern, vulture mask, scavenger grenade, singularity bomb, electric spear, or gun, spawning with a neuron fly light effect, or a consumed camouflower, being able to use passages, which are earned by completing challenges instead of earning passages. With this poke enabled, you get passages when you complete objectives, one per objective. Being able to slow time as if you had consumed a mushroom by pressing pick up and jump at the same time with a small cooldown, and the various powers for most of the slug cats. Spearmaster's dual wielding spears, Goreman's crafting, Artificer's explosive jump and parry, Artificer's explosion resistance, Rivulet's speed and breath, and Hunter's back spear are all available. Spearmaster's spear production, Artificer's bomb production and mauling, Goreman's weight and ability to cough up items, and Saint's tongue are not available. And meal eating is included with the crafting perk. Needless to say, these perks are extremely powerful. You can give any slug cat rivulet speed, artificer's explosive jumps, and even the all-powerful back spear. To counterbalance perks, you can also choose to make the game more difficult with burdens once you unlock them. Burdens will increase your total score with a point multiplier depending on the burden. The burdens are blinded, which is a 20% point multiplier. It causes the world to become permanently dark. It's not pitch black, but it makes seeing dangers difficult. Interestingly, it actually increases the visibility in pitch black rooms in Shaded Citadel. If you choose this burden, make sure you bring either a scavenger lantern or have the neuron fly glow. It also seems to cause nighttime spawns in some areas, like cyan lizards in the wall. Doomed, which is a 75% multiplier, it causes permadeath whenever you would lose karma, instead of when your karma would drop below zero. This means that any death is permanent unless you have a karma flower, in which case death is permanent if you die without its protection. Other than that, it doesn't change the game though. It's the highest point multiplier available, but I wouldn't attempt it without a karma flower. Hunted, which is a 50% multiplier, it causes hostile enemies in a region to know your location and hunt you down relentlessly. 
It'll lead to some very clustered rooms and environments, and can make certain areas like the cramped subterranean tunnels a nightmare to try and pass. If you choose to use this burden, you'll be faced with constant dangers from many, many enemies, especially as slug cats with dangerous spawns. You've got to stay on the move, be ready to fight, and have good knowledge of alternative routes to take through an area. Pursued, which is a 35% multiplier, it causes a hyper-aggressive red centipede, which I'll call a god centipede from here on out, to spawn and chase you every cycle. The centipede can be killed, but it'll disappear and not leave a corpse, and then respawn later that same cycle. The amount of time it takes to spawn is random. Sometimes it won't show up for quite a while into a cycle, and other times it'll be on you immediately. You'll see a message pop up when it spawns in, and a message if it leaves. The god centipede is much more dangerous than regular red centipedes, because stealth can't really be employed against it. You can fight and kill it, though. It will take a not insignificant amount of time, but a well-placed exploding spear after knocking off the armored shells will kill it. Spore puffs can be employed as well, and this is particularly viable if you have the item crafting perk. Regardless of how the god centipede dies, it will never leave a corpse for you to eat. Even bringing it into a shelter while you sleep, which normally kills centipedes, will just cause it to disappear. The paralyzing effect of echoes will affect this centipede though, and you can use that to kill one easily. Because of all this, you could use this burden to try to farm points or red centipede kills if you need them for a challenge. You do get kill credit for the god centipede as it disappears. I wouldn't call it a great strategy, but it is an option. Alternatively, you could try to distract and juke the centipede. It will fight other enemies, although it almost always wins and does so quickly. You can use tunnels and room transitions to get away from it, and sometimes it'll lose track of you between rooms and you can get away from it. You can also go through karma gates between regions, and it'll typically despawn and then respawn closer to you. I would highly, highly recommend using the rivulet speed buff if you want to use this burden. That's a brief overview of the game mode, and now I'm going to go into a lot more detail on the challenges that can appear and how to complete them. You can pick between 1 and 5 challenges, and enable or disable certain ones with this menu here. When playing as Artificer, no on fly gifting cannot appear, and Pearl Delivery instead has you go to 5 pebbles. When playing as Spearmaster, no on fly gifting cannot appear. When playing as Saint, no on fly gifting and Pearl Delivery cannot appear, and Pearl Hoarding is replaced with common pearls instead of colored pearls. Each challenge is worth a certain number of points. The difficulty slider at the top of the screen does not affect the Passage, Echo, Pearl Delivery, or Vista Visiting challenges, but for the rest of the challenges, it increases the number of times that the action must be done, and it also increases the difficulty of the enemy that you have to kill for hunting challenges. You can also choose to hide challenges, which will double the number of points that they give you. Hidden challenges are always randomized from the total pool of challenges, disabling challenges does not affect hidden ones. At least one challenge must be unhidden, and all hidden challenges will be revealed at once once all unhidden challenges are completed. You can make progress towards hidden challenges before seeing them, and you can even complete them without knowing what they are. The passage challenges require you to earn a particular passage to complete them. You begin with the survivor passage, so almost all passages are available to make progress towards immediately. Any passage except for mother or survivor can be chosen, and they are worth a varying number of points. All passages are worth the same amount of points for every slug cat, except where noted. The outlaw passage, which you earn by killing creatures, is worth 25 points. It can be earned fairly easily anywhere, but Shaded Citadel with Lantern Mice is the easiest location in my opinion. The Saint Passage, which requires you to avoid dealing damage to or killing creatures, is worth 30 points. This is increased to 70 for Spearmaster, but not for Artificer or Hunter. If you're playing as a carnivorous slug cat, popcorn plants are an appealing option for food. You can use a Vulture Mask to avoid confrontations with lizards, and you can even hunt food and store it in shelters for later cycles. It won't count against Saint if you killed it ahead of time. As Spearmaster, your options are pretty much limited to just popcorn plants. I find the route from Five Pebbles to the bottom of the wall to Chimney Canopy to Industrial Complex to Pipe Yard to be a pretty good route to take if you need to hit popcorn plants. The Monk Passage, which requires you to avoid eating creatures, is worth 30 points. This is also increased to 70 as Spearmaster. As a carnivorous slug cat, popcorn plants are still your best option. You can also utilize starving yourself to get two cycles of food out of a single popcorn plant. This works for the Saint and Hunter passages as well, although for Hunter you only eat creatures instead of popcorn plants. The Hunter Passage, which requires eating only creatures, is worth 40 points. As non-carnivorous slug cats, hunt for bat flies, centipedes of any size, and jellyfish. As carnivorous slug cats, you can probably get this without even trying. This passage cannot be chosen for Saint. The Friend Passage, which you earn by sleeping in the same shelter as a lizard for three cycles in a row, is worth 50 points. The lizard at the beginning of Shaded Citadel is extremely easy to tame with lantern mice, and there's an abundance of food and a lack of dangers nearby. I find that to be a pretty good location. Just feed the lizard a dead mouse and wait for it to get tamed. The Nomad Passage is worth 60 points and requires visiting four different regions and sleeping in a new region each cycle. You can pass through multiple regions in a single cycle and get multiple pips of progress towards it. It seems to track Karma Gates. If you start in Sky Islands and go through the Karma Gate to Chimney Canopy, that's one pip of progress. If you start in Pipe Yard, go to Sky Islands, and then go to Chimney Canopy, that's two pips because you passed two Karma Gates. Keep in mind that sleeping in a repeat region will cancel all progress. Dragon Slayer is worth 60 points, and it requires killing six different varieties of lizards. It was overhauled with Downpour and no longer requires the six specific species. Just do yourself a favor and don't try to kill red lizards for this, they are very tough. Scholar is worth 70 points and is earned after touching three different colored pearls. 
However, Monk, Survivor, and Gourmand must visit Moon before earning progress towards this passage. The passage does not silently track progress in the background. Only after visiting Moon and resting can progress be earned for those slug cats. If you're playing as one of those three, I would go visit Moon and then pick up the three colored pearls in Shoreline. There's one inside Moon herself, one if you go to the left from the entrance near Shaded Citadel, and one in the big tower from the third room to the right in this shelter room, which you want Rivulet Speed, Bubbleweed, or a Jetfish to get to. Scholar cannot be chosen for Saint since there are no colored pearls. Murder needs you to repeatedly starve yourself and is worth 75 points. Storing food in shelters other than the one that you rested at is a good idea. Personally, I find the last shelter in Farmways before Subterranean or the two shelters next to each other at the entrance to Industrial Complex to be a good choice to get this passage. Dead creatures like centipedes, lizards, and scavengers can also be stored in the shelter you rest at without auto-eating them. You can starve yourself and then hit an echo to earn progress without suffering negative effects as well, since it'll reset you to the last time you saved, which is before you starved. And remember, once you fill your food gauge to fall, you'll no longer suffer starvation effects, so keep that in mind. Also, keep in mind that popcorn plants are still your best friend. Pilgrim, worth 80 points, requires visiting every echo in the world. There are six for most characters, Chimney Canopy, The Wall, Sky Islands, Farmerways, Subterranean, and Shaded Citadel. Artificer has an extra echo in Metropolis, and Saint has echoes in Drainage System and Shoreline, and the Shaded Citadel echo is moved to Silent Construct, and there's no exterior echo. Wanderer is also worth 80 points, and requires you to sleep in a shelter in every region. Simply visiting the region is not enough. And lastly, the Chieftain Passage, which requires you to boost your scavenger reputation to a certain level, is worth 80 points. For obvious reasons, this cannot be chosen as a challenge when playing as Artificer. Be sure to pick up and gift pearls whenever possible. You can also hunt Overseer Eyes and Rescue Scavengers from Danger for easy bonus points as well. Remember that Colored Pearls no longer despawn, so you can farm reputation using those by going back to the room they're in and giving them to the scavengers each cycle. To do cycle score challenges, you need to earn a certain amount of score from killing creatures in a single cycle, between 20 and 120, depending on the difficulty. It's worth a number of points equal to one third of that score, rounded down, which is 6 on the lowest difficulty and 40 on the highest. I find Chimney Canopy, near the Industrial Complex entrance, to be a good place to do this challenge, since you can attract vultures with grubs, there's a scavenger treasury with exploding spears nearby, and there are plenty of lizards. Plus, you can double back to Industrial Complex to kill more lizards if necessary. For the Echo challenges, each Echo is worth 50 points, except for the Echoes that are normally there on the first cycle you visit them. That means Subterranean and the Exterior Echoes are worth 35 points, and all the others are worth 50. As Saint, the Exterior Echo is absent, but the Primordial Underground Echo is still worth 35 points. Overall score challenges give you points equal to a quarter of the score required. You just need to kill a bunch of things over the course of the expedition. The nice thing about this challenge is you can use it to determine when an enemy is dead and when an enemy is just stunned. If the challenge pops up and you make progress toward it, the enemy died. Hunting challenges will give you a specific enemy to kill and a specific amount. The difficulty slider influences the enemy chosen and the number required. Furthermore, the slug cat you're playing as has an influence on these. Only enemies that naturally spawn in the world will be chosen. Lineage-only enemies cannot. And the number of dens in the world of that enemy affect the maximum number chosen. For instance, when playing as Hunter, there are barely any Aquapedes. Even on maximum difficulty, the game will only give you a challenge to kill a single one. Meanwhile, Rivulet, who has many more Aquapedes, will have the challenge to kill seven. These challenges are worth a number of points equal to the normal score of the enemy times the number of times you need to kill it. This shows how many points every enemy is worth. The maximum number required is 15, although it can only be chosen for enemies with a large number of spawns. Uniquely, Saint has a 35% multiplier applied to all hunting challenges. As an example, the challenge to kill 13 King Vultures would be worth 325 points because they're worth 25 score each. The single highest point challenge in the game is kill 15 Myros Vultures as Saint, which is worth 506 points after the 35% multiplier. The following enemies cannot appear in hunting challenges. Stowaways. The stowaways can still appear in expedition mode, but they can't appear as hunting challenges. Baby noodle flies, reindeer, leviathans, coalescipedes, overseers, hazers, firebugs, mother longlegs, hunter longlegs, and slug pups. On the lowest difficulty, the hunting challenges are mostly spiders, centipedes, weak hostile creatures like drop rigs, and neutral creatures like egg bugs and snails. On medium, weaker species of lizards and stronger hostile creatures like center wings, scavengers, and elite scavengers are typically chosen, along with moderate to high numbers of neutral creatures. On the highest difficulty, you'll be almost exclusively killing vultures, tough lizards, myros birds, daddy longlegs, and when possible, enemies like red lizards, red centipedes, king vultures, and myros vultures. If you're stuck needing to kill tough enemies, try to trade with scavenger merchants or loot scavenger treasuries for exploding spears. A single well-placed exploding spear will instantly kill most enemies in the game. A daddy longlegs dies in one hit to the core, myros birds typically die in one body hit, and vultures and king vultures will typically die or be crippled after one clean throw. You can use colored pearls to trade repeatedly over multiple cycles since the pearl will respawn. Having a back spear is a massive help for transporting spears as well. 
Item collecting challenges require you to store between two and eight of a certain item in a single shelter, depending on the difficulty. The possible items are puff balls, also known as spore puffs, scavenger lanterns, firecracker plants, aka cherry bombs, flare bombs, aka flashbangs, jellyfish, mushrooms, fly lows, aka batnip, and scavenger bombs. The challenge is worth a number of points equal to seven times the number of items collected. 14 if you collect two, and 56 if you collect eight. This is where you can find each of these items easily. Batnip can be found pretty commonly in the outskirts and industrial complex. Scavenger lanterns and bombs can be easily obtained by trading with scavenger merchants. The one in Shaded Citadel is particularly good because it's very close to a shelter. Flashbangs can be looted in Shaded Citadel and Subterranean, particularly in the areas with the Myros birds. Spore puffs are all over the place in farm arrays. Jellyfish are found in Shoreline. Firecracker plants are just everywhere, but this shelter in Sky Islands has a particularly high concentration right next to it. Mushrooms are also found everywhere, but farm arrays, outskirts, and garbage wastes have some convenient locations that are right next to shelters. Neuron gifting challenges are going to require you to bring neuron flies from 5 pebbles to moon. On the lowest difficulty, it'll always require you to bring a single fly. On medium, it'll typically require one, but occasionally two. On the highest difficulty, it'll be a random amount from two to four. You get a number of points equal to 70 times the number of neuron flies delivered to a maximum of 280. Don't be afraid to take two trips if you have to deliver two to three flies, and you will have to take multiple trips if you have to deliver four. You can store a neuron fly in your stomach if you're full, and you can potentially use passages to transport flies in your stomach that way to avoid a second trip. You will have to get past five pebbles to get the flies. Be careful and get out of there as soon as you can, because he will kill you if you linger. Pearl delivery challenges require giving a colored pearl from a particular area to moon or to five pebbles as artificer. The amount of points given is based on region as shown here, and Artificer gets the same amount of points despite the pearls being delivered to 5 pebbles instead of moon. Spearmaster has a blanket plus 20 points applied to all pearl delivery challenges. Pearl hoarding challenges require storing 2 to 5 colored pearls in a specific area with the amount based on difficulty. Pearls are worth 23 points each, so you'd get 46 points for a challenge to stash 2 of them. As Saint, there are only common pearls to hoard, and they're worth 10 points each instead. Spear pinning challenges require you to pin a random number of enemies from 6 to 19 to walls or floors. You can spear corpses to walls to meet this requirement as well. Baby centipedes are a great choice for this. Push a dead body up against a wall and keep spearing it to get it to stick. You get a number of points equal to 8 times the number of enemies required. The number chosen is random, but lower difficulties tend to be lower and higher difficulties tend to be higher. And lastly, Vista Visiting Challenges require you to find a Vista point in a given region. This is a small token sitting in a particular room that you need to touch. You'll get a visual indicator whenever you're in the room with the Vista point. Vista locations are chosen at random from one of several possible rooms, typically in scenic locations. All vistas are worth 40 points. I believe the region maps on the wiki have been updated to contain possible vista points, so check those out if you can't find it. The number of points you earn can be increased through point multipliers and hiding challenges. Each additional challenge above 1 gives you 10% bonus points. 2 challenges is a 10% bonus, and 5 challenges is a 40% bonus. A hidden challenge is worth double points, but the trade-off is that you don't know what it is ahead of time. Burdens, once unlocked, can be used to give you a point multiplier between 20 and 180%, depending on how many that you enable. The maximum possible point multiplier is 220% by playing with all burdens and with 5 challenges. Note that point multipliers stack additively and not multiplicatively. The most points available on a single expedition, by my count, is 9,254. To achieve this, you need to do the following 5 challenges as Saint, but with everything except Kill Cyan Lizards hidden. It's tedious to do, but you have to calculate the point value that you would get after getting one of the challenges and re-randomize individual ones until you get it. You also need to have every burden enabled. I think the day after I make this video, I'm going to try streaming this challenge, although no promises that it'll actually go well. In order to level up and unlock perks, you're going to want to complete challenges that give you more points. What I did was a tough 1300 point hunter expedition at level 2, which skyrocketed me up a bunch of points. If you want to grind XP and wins through multiple runs though, I think going for Echo, Vista Point, and Spear Pinning challenges is best. If you want to do a single big expedition, I would set the difficulty high, hide 4 out of 5 challenges, and roll the randomized dice until you get a big point value. Remember though, if it's worth a lot of points, they're probably going to have you kill a lot of tough creatures. Once you start to level up, you'll begin to unlock perks. Personally, this is how I'd rank them. Scavenger Lantern is obsoleted by Neuron Fly Glow, and it's only really useful for keeping Saint warm, so I put it at D tier. Vulture Mask is good for traveling through areas safely, so I give it a low B. Scavenger Bomb is a one-time use weapon that won't do enough damage to kill large threats, and it can kill you, so I'd give it a low C. Neuron Glow is a wonderful all-around perk that reduces how hostile coalesce speeds and spiders will be and provides constant bright light. I would put it at the top of B tier. There aren't very many expeditions I wouldn't take Neuron Glow on. Backspear is S tier, easily. Aside from gun expeditions, I always want a Backspear, second best perk in my opinion. I would give Karma Flower an A. It's very useful, but it only helps to nullify mistakes. It can also be lost permanently. Similarly, Passages get an A. They're a quick Karma restock and a pinch and easy travel around the world, but that's more of a time save in fixing mistakes than a proactive benefit. Singularity Bomb, strange as it may seem, I put in only B tier. 
It's extremely powerful, but it's only a one-time use. You can use it to kill one or two massive threats in hunting challenges, but oftentimes your challenges are going to require a lot more than one or two kills. For instance, if I need to kill 15 Myros birds, a Singularity Bomb might kill five at most. I'd still need to find a way to kill 10 more, so the bomb is just making it a little bit easier. It's also very easy to kill yourself on accident with the bomb. Electric Spear is low A. Electric Spears are very strong. They're reusable, incapacitate almost everything, and can't be easily obtained like a Vulture Mask is. I put Spear Dual Wielding in low B tier. It sounds nice on paper, but a spear in both hands is worse than a spear in a rock most of the time, in my opinion. It's good for killing centipedes and vultures, but not lizards. Explosion resistance is a solid C. It's much less helpful on non-artificer characters since you can't produce bombs at will. Explosive jump, however, is easily A. It is very, very good. Not only does it open up new maneuvering options and paths, but it lets you parry and stun creatures. Item crafting is down in B tier. It's very good for certain things, like making spore puffs to kill centipedes or for gathering items for item collecting quests. It also makes befriending scavengers very easy since you can craft pearls. High agility is easily S, top of S, best perk in the game without a doubt. Rivulet speed is insanely strong, and it gives rivulet swimming boosts and breath as well. Once you unlock this perk, you are never going to want to do an expedition without it. It is that strong. And lastly, the joke rifle is in B. It's very powerful, but it's awkward to use, and it's less fun than spear combat, in my opinion. And now, on to the eight missions. These are specific expeditions, one for each slug cat, where you spawn in a specific shelter and need to complete specific objectives. You're able to use the perks you've unlocked, and they're at varying levels of difficulty, and varying levels of time. A mission like bird watching is very quick, maybe 20 or 30 minutes, where something like Apex Predator takes hours. Bird watching is Hunter's Challenge, and you'll get the Vulture Mask perk for beating it. You spawn in Chimney Canopy and need to kill three vultures, one king vulture, and reach the Vista Point. The shelter you spawn in is just above a scavenger treasury, and you can loot exploding spears from there to kill vultures easily. Just be careful not to have the garbage worm steal your spears. You can chase them off by running at them without a spear, then pick the spears up and walk through. I recommend stockpiling weaponry and going to the leftmost shelter in Chimney Canopy, just above the industrial complex gate. There's a vulture grub in here and a good place to trap vultures for killing out here. Place plenty of spears on the ground, throw the grub, and unload on vultures when they come. Then run into them and pick up and throw the spears again. I recommend using the exploding spears on king vultures if you're struggling on them, and you can always go run and get more exploding spears. The vista point is just up the middle path in this room, keep going straight up from here and you'll reach it. Guiding light is survivor's challenge, and you'll need to deliver a neuron fly to moon and reach several vista points. However, you have the blinded burden active, making the world very dark. You spawn just outside of five pebbles with a neuron fly, but I would recommend backtracking for an extra one to give yourself the light buff to illuminate the area. The vulture mask perk helps a lot with making your way through these areas. The first vista point is in the yellow lizard ball. Go down to the very bottom of it and jump off to the right to reach it. Make sure you hold up. You'll land on a horizontal pole beneath you. The industrial complex vista is in the top area near the shaded citadel entrance, the one with all the popcorn plants. Head up here to reach it. Lastly, the shoreline vista is in this long tunnel room, to the right of this shelter, the room with all the leeches in the water. You can either hug the wall as you slide and jump off, or fall straight down from this room transition to reach it. This mission will unlock the Neuron Fly perk. Nature's Friend is quite simple. You need to earn the Friend, Saint, and Chieftain passages, and you spawn an industrial complex. You'll get a Karma Flower perk for beating it, so it's very worthwhile to do. I recommend farming for Saint first, with the various popcorn plants and food between these two shelters and industrial complex. There are also four pearls in an industrial complex that you can pick up to give to scavengers to get a head start on Chieftain. Then go to the beginning of Shaded Citadel and tame the lizard there with lantern mice to get friend. If you haven't gotten Chieftain yet, head to Garbage Waste and finish up there, but with the four pearls and hunting overseer eyes, you can easily get Chieftain by that point. Food Tour is Gourmand's mission, and you need to make your way from Sump Tunnel to Shoreline and Outer Expanse. While doing this, you need to earn Hunter and Monk. I recommend immediately going down into the right from Sump Tunnel to get to Shoreline and try to get Hunter while doing this. Make your way to the tower with the pink pearl, which is where the Vista Point is. Then go back to the bottom of Shoreline and take the path to Subterranean. If you haven't gotten Hunter yet, finish it at this first shelter in Subterranean with the centipedes. Then start working on Monk, using this popcorn plant and the large number of gooey ducks across Subterranean and Outer Expanse. You need to make your way to Journey's End at the very top of the tree near the last train shelter. Continue to climb up here using the vistas all the way to the very top, then fall to the left and over and you'll be at the shelter. Finishing this unlocks the crafting perk. Scavenger Hunt is one of the more difficult missions, and as you might expect, you play as Artificer and need to massacre scavengers. 25 normal scavengers and 3 elite scavengers, and you spawn in Metropolis. There is one golden rule in Metropolis that you should never forget. There are always, always more scavengers. Never get complacent thinking you've killed them all. It's possible to finish this expedition in a single cycle, but that's very dangerous. I recommend taking things slowly, going to the entrance to Metropolis, and using this shelter here. If, when heading there, you take the upper path to the right of the scavenger toll, you can bombard them with explosives and get several free kills. Usually one to two elite scavengers will die, and they're the hard part of this challenge. If you wander around Metropolis, you can easily find 25 regular scavengers to kill, but elite scavs are trickier to find. 
You can camp at the center of this toll to kill scavengers on each side, and the high-risk, high-reward play is to wait for nighttime. Once night falls, Metropolis is crawling with elite scavs. If you can't find any to kill, there isn't a better way to flush them out than that. You'll unlock the Electric Spear perk for beating this. Apex Predator, in my opinion, is the hardest of the missions. I recommend doing this last with multiple perks to support you. You need to seek out and kill a Daddy Longlegs, Red Lizard, Red Centipede, and Myros Vulture Spearmaster, and earn a total of 300 points from kills. I recommend taking at least Rivulet Speed, Back Spear, Karma Flower, Electric Spear, and Item Crafting. You don't need these, but they will greatly help in the challenge. The Daddy Longlegs can be found in Unfortunate Development or Garbage Wastes. I'm going to go over how to kill them in Unfortunate Development because I think it's easier there. You have two options. Either find an Exploding Spear, which can spawn with Drop Rigs, Scavengers, or rarely replace regular Spears, or kill it with hundreds of Spears that you create yourself. Go to this shelter in Unfortunate Development. The Daddy Longlegs in this room pretty much never moves and is positioned to be attacked easily. If you've got the Exploding Spear, try your best to line up a throw directly on the core. Don't be afraid to wait, there's no rain here and there's no risk. Be sure to use the path here and fly up and down to get between the top and bottom of the room. Don't risk going near the photo long legs. If you want to kill it by hand, carve out a solid 15 or 20 minutes of your time because that's how long it's going to take. Position yourself horizontally and just make and throw spears. Be careful of losing your grip on the pole here. In zero gravity, spear throws will propel you forward and potentially off of a pole. On the bright side, you'll get 10 food very easily by doing this. Be sure to snack on a neuron fly while you're here as well. Then, the red lizard is up next. Going down to Industrial Complex from Chimney Canopy, there's a Red Lizard in this room here. This is where the Electric Spear comes in. Red Lizards are very difficult to line up attacks on because they have incredible senses and flip around very quickly, and they don't get stunned by debris. That's on top of their spit attack and tongue that's able to grab spears from you from a distance. I recommend using this hallway here with this tunnel to line up a throw on it from behind. Alternatively, you can try to feed it and line up a shot on it as it retreats to its den. An Exploding Spear helps a lot. Even if you land an Electric Spear, you still need to land follow-up throws, and being close to a Red Lizard is extremely dangerous. The moment the stun wears off, it's gonna bite and kill you. Don't take any risks. As soon as you kill that Lizard, head back to rest at the shelter to save your progress. For the Red Centipede, you'll want to head to Pipeyard, into the large open room to the right of this shelter. Item crafting is your friend here. There are two mushrooms to the left path of this shelter going to the bottom of this room. Combine those with debris to make spore puffs, which will kill a Red Centipede easily. If you don't have item crafting, I would recommend bringing an Exploding Spear to try to land a shot on an exposed section after you knock off the armor. And lastly, the Myros Vulture is a real bitch to kill. For the most part, I have only seen them in Moon, aside from one that very briefly appeared in the exterior once. They're going to fly between rooms, much like regular vultures, except they have incredible tracking and an insta-kill bite. They're also very tanky, barely get stunned by spears, and fire off explosives when wounded. Please, do not attempt this without bringing additional weaponry. Killing a Myros Vulture with regular spears is incredibly difficult, even with an infinite supply of them. They appear in rooms where they can flee extremely easily. You can unload into them, and they'll just fall down and fly away. Aside from situations where they can get stuck, they can and will flee the moment an opportunity arises once they get wounded enough. If you want to do this, you're going to want to bring them to an area where they can't fly away easily and where you have a large stockpile of spears, like here. Lead it in and just unload spears on it. Back away from the explosions and don't let up on the pressure. Alternatively, just bring, like, exploding spears, or electric spears, or a singularity bomb. The singularity bomb perk is great for this challenge. It essentially gives you a free kill for one of the four creatures. However, keep in mind that Spearmaster has no stomach, so you need to carry it to whatever you want to kill. It will annihilate the daddy long legs, but be careful that you're not carrying any explosives to set off when you throw it, because it'll detonate them and kill you if you're in the shockwave. It solves the issue of lining up an attack on the red lizard, so it's a good option if you're struggling with that. The Red Centipede is the easiest one to kill if you have Spore Puffs, so I wouldn't recommend using it on that, but it is an option. And, if you can bring it all the way to Moon, it will absolutely eviscerate a Myros Vulture and save you a lot of trouble. Unlike the other missions, there's no unlock for this one. Rivulet's mission is called Hunter Gatherer, and you need to collect two of each of these items and store them in a shelter while being pursued by the Centipede God. I highly, highly recommend having the crafting perk if you're struggling with this challenge, as everything you need can be crafted or found right around Pipeyard. Start by making your way up Sump Tunnel. Go straight up here and keep going up and to the left until you get to Pipeyard proper. You can find two Flylers in this room here, where the Red Centipede was as Spearmaster. Then bring them into this shelter to the left, where the three rooms in the popcorn plant is. Go to the left and down to where these two mushrooms are. You can store these and then craft them into Spore Puffs and store those and that's already three-fifths of the challenge. You can also use them to kill the god centipede in a pinch. Then, make your way to the pipeyard exit to industrial complex and craft two flashbangs using fruit and debris. Lastly, bring those two flashbangs to the water pit in industrial complex and combine them with a popped bubble fruit. That'll make a jellyfish. And just like that, the challenge is done. The god centipede is dangerous, but use pipes to your advantage and outmaneuver it. Keep the spore puffs handy to deal with it in a pinch, and don't be afraid to sleep in a shelter if it's chasing you. It won't spawn in immediately on a new cycle and you can buy some time. Lastly, Saint's challenge is done, 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 done. 
you need to kill a bunch of things with a gun. Ironically, I find that the better the item you put into the gun as ammo, the worse it performs. With regular debris, the gun is an absolute powerhouse of rapid fire death, with each debris becoming 20 bullets. With bombs or singularity bombs, it just shoots the item that you could have thrown for the same effect. Be careful not to lose track of the gun because it has a very weird hitbox and it'll fall into tunnels. Just load every single debris that you find into the rifle and shoot it. You can knock lizards off of ledges and sky islands and chimney canopy for easy points or just unload on them. Vultures can be killed too if you can get them into the ground to stun lock them. A single bullet to the head insta-kills a scavenger and you can fire downward and upward and have your tongue to cling to ceilings so scavengers are pretty easy to kill. Don't try to eat fruit with the gun in the other hand because you'll load it into the gun instead. You'll also need to earn the Nomad Passage at some point. And that's Expedition Mode. All in all, it's a very fun game mode, and definitely worth playing. You have a lot of control over the difficulty, so it can be as hard or as easy as you want. And it's the only game mode where you can freely use GUN! The